Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you. We thank you, first of all, that you woke us up this morning and that you started us on our way. Lord God, we thank you for this auspicious occasion, this celebratory occasion, Lord God, that you have awakened my auntie, Lord God, some 29,200 plus times, Lord God, and I thank you for it. I thank you for this day. So, Father God, as we go into this service, yeah, yeah, we do this to lift up your name. We do this to give you praise. We do this to, to exalt you because you are worthy. So, Lord God, I'm asking that everything that is done is done in decency and order, that we lift you up, that we praise you, that we magnify you because you are God and you're God all by yourself. I thank you for this wonderful woman of God. I thank you for this mother. I thank you for this sister. I thank you for this auntie, Lord God. I thank you for this evangelist. I thank you for this pioneer in the name of Jesus. So, Lord God, move mightily through here. Lord God, we didn't just come into the church just to be in the church, but we want you in the midst with us so that we can lift you up and magnify your name. We love you, we praise you, and we thank you. And the church said, in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Come on, say amen again. One more time. Amen. Hallelujah. Sister Mar. They rise up and call her blessed, happy, prompts, prosperous, to be admired. Her husband also, and he praises her, saying, Many daughters have done nobly and well with the strength and character that is steadfast in goodness. But you, our dear beloved, excel them all. Charm and grace are deceptive and superficial. Beauty is vain. But a woman such as our woman, Fears the Lord. She is but a woman who fears the Lord. Rather
reverently, worshiping, obeying, and serving, and trusting him with all filled respect. She shall be praised. Today, we will give her of the product of her hands and let her own works, which are many works, down through the years, praise her amongst these gates. Oh, yes, oh, yes, the occasion. And I want you to remain on your feet. As we know it, this woman of God, a seasoned woman of legacy. And we know the building that we stand in, she is a lady of legacy. That she has built this house with her husband, the late Bishop Marvin Pryor. A woman of excellence. Mother is excellent all day. Even on her casual day, she's a woman of excellence. And the grace that she has is one that cannot be compared. We honor on today this woman of God, one who wears many hats. I need you to clap your hands, open your mouth, and receive our honoree on today, none other than our very own Mother Ruth Pryor. Brother Derek Pryor and Administrative Assistant Chris B. Pryor. Come on, I need y'all to clap and make some noise. We had a celebration. We celebrate you, Mother. We honor you on today. You are worthy of double honor. And doesn't she seem so elegant on today? Today will be the best day. The best day of wonderful, wonderful guests that are here on today. And Mother, we have so many that have came to be with you, and it's a wonderful surprise. Her out-of-town guests are Evangelist Linda Owens from Southeast Texas. Are you here? Can you wave your hand so she can see you? Matter of fact, just stand up if you feel like it. You just stand up and blow her a kiss so she can see you. Pastor and Mrs. Adrian Mosley and family from Oak Brook, Illinois. You here? Sister Linda Littles from Glen Ellen, Illinois. Benjamin Mosley from Lombard, Illinois. If you are here, just stand up and wave your hand so she can see you. Sister Asmenia Perry from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. God bless you. Blow mother a kiss and let her see that you're here. Sister Jean Perry from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Dr. and Mrs. Fred and Barbara Littles from Morgantown, Virginia. Pastor and Lady Roland and Jean Hendricks and family. All right. Missionary Deborah Martin, all the way from Charlotte, North Carolina. Pastor and Lady Jerry and Sharon Heron from Cincinnati, Ohio. Yes? All right. Darlene Talbert from Mesquite, Texas. Candace Williams from Royce City, Texas. 
Pastor and Lady Sion Thompson from Charlotte, North Carolina. Is there anybody here that's from Detroit, Michigan? Can you stand up? Anybody from Detroit, not from Saginaw, can you stand up and wave your hands? Detroit is in the house today, Mother. Mother Weiler. Mother Weiler. Mother Winans, where are you? Woo! God bless you, Mother Winans. So glad that you're here. Anyone here from Flint, Michigan? Anyone from Flint, Michigan? Come on, God bless you. Blow Mother a kiss, let us see you. I believe Grand Rapids, Michigan is in the house on today. Grand Rapids. We got room for some other folks that are gonna be coming. But mother, we have people from all over that have came to say that they love you and to celebrate you on today. We have next, I don't see him, but he might be here, Pastor Trice. Is Pastor Larry Trice here as of yet? That's all right. We have a video presentation with Elder Harvey as the moderator. Mother Dolores Williams from Wisconsin is here. Where are you, mother? God bless you. Let us receive right now this special video presentation from Elder Harvey. Oh, Mother can't see it, y'all. Hold on. She can't see her presentation. Can I get a gentleman to come up here real quick so we can get a chair over here just so she can see her presentation? Thank you. Is. We just got to make some adjustments. That's how women do. Move the furniture around. Just sit here just for a moment. Can I escort you, please, Mother? You know, I say, Mother, when I call her on the phone. It's 1943, and guess what? In order to accommodate the U.S. military's need for copper during World War II, pennies were being made of steel and not copper. Jazz legend Duke Ellington played at New York's Carnegie Hall for the first time. And would you believe sliced bread? Sliced bread, y'all, was banned in the United States for wartime conservation. Boy, am I glad that's over. And Norman Rockwell's Rosie the Riveter first appeared on the cover of the Saturday Evening Post. But perhaps one of the most exciting events taking place in a small city in Tennessee called Henderson was the arrival of a little baby girl who would grow up to be a notable and astounding woman with an amazing talent and over a lifetime would make amazing contributions toward the building of God's kingdom. None other than our very own Evangelist Ruth C. Pryor. Now, because the life accomplishments and contributions of Mother Pryor are so vast and impossible to capture in the length of this video presentation, let's just take a heartfelt and shall we say power walk down memory lane. Ruth was born to William and Irma Trice on October 16, 1943 in Henderson, Tennessee. The second oldest of five children, Larry, Jean, Diane, and Sharon, Mother Pryor grew up with songs in her heart and a strong and talented voice to bring it out, much to the delight of many who heard her. When the family moved to Jackson, Michigan, Ruth graduated from Jackson High School and matriculated onto Jackson Business School. 
1963, Ruth married the love of her life, Marvin C. Pryor, and the two later moved to Flint, Michigan. While there, Ruth continued her education at Mott Community College, and she then went on to earn her Bachelor of Science degree in communications at the University of Michigan. Oh, and I forgot, between all that marrying, moving, educating, and so on, Ruth and Marvin managed to bring forth to the world four precious gifts, Derek, Vonda, Mel, and Chris. Ruth and Marvin worked in the education system, impacting the lives of so many area youth. After serving faithfully at the Holy Temple Church of God in Christ under the leadership of Pastor Roger Jones, both were elevated to Pastor and First Lady of Williams Memorial Church of God in Christ in Saginaw, and it is there where the wheels were set in motion for the extraordinary ministry we know and love today, Victorious Believers Ministries. Mother Pryor has endured more than her share of tragic losses, including siblings, the love of her life, our founder, the late Bishop Marvin C. Pryor, beloved son, Elder Mel A. Pryor, and most recent, her beloved daughter, missionary Vonda Pryor. Despite the emotional toll, Mother Pryor rejects at all costs, leaving the side of her Lord and Savior, leaning on her favorite scriptures, Isaiah 26 and 3, Thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusted in thee, and Lamentations 3, 21 through 23, This I recall to my mind, therefore have I hope. It is of the Lord's mercies, that we are not consumed because his compassion fails not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Even today, Mother Pryor travels the country and the world, spreading good cheer and hope, sharing the redemptive healing and restoration story of Him who died for us. She continues to build her godly legacy, impacting the local and national church, the community and the world, spreading the gospel in word and song. So much more can be said about this awesome woman of God, but this one and most important thing is what must be said. Mother Pryor, not only do we love you, we adore you. Your beauty, charisma, faith walk, and ministry continues to change the lives of those in your presence. And this is why we gather in solidarity to wish you the greatest of birthday celebrations yet. And before we close, here are just a few happy birthday wishes from just a fraction of the many who love you.
from the Big Choice Believers Ministry Women's Department. Happy birthday! We love you! Our precious mother, Ruth C. Pryor from the Christian Education Department, we commend you on 80 year celebration and we came to say, Happy birthday, Mother Pryor! We love you! From the board of directors, Father Pryor, we just want to say happy, happy birthday. Mother Pryor, on behalf of the Family Enrichment Department, we just want to tell you happy birthday. We appreciate the woman you are. We appreciate all that you do. We appreciate your encouragement. We appreciate your testimonies. We appreciate the role model you are to us. And on behalf, again, of the Family Enrichment Department, we just want to say, Happy Birthday, Mother Pryor! You are built to last! Mother Pryor, on behalf of the ministerial staff, we'd like to wish you uh, Happy Birthday! We love you! department would like to wish evangelist Ruth C. Pryor happy 80th birthday we love you and we thank God that you have been built to last Pryor, on behalf of the men's department we would like to wish you happy birthday God bless you, Mother Pryor. On behalf of the administrative staff here at Victorious Believers Ministries, we just want you to know that we love you and we appreciate you. You are such a blessing to the kingdom of God. Happy, Happy 80th birthday, birthday, Mother Pryor. Pryor. We, we love, love you. you. Mr. Pryor, on behalf of the music department, you have been an inspiration to us over the years. And may this year be filled with love, blessings, and beautiful music. Happy 80th birthday, Mother Pryor! We love you! It is a privilege to have this opportunity to extend our humble congratulations and best wishes on your 80th birthday. My name is Dr. Vincent Oriedo, the President of the Board of Directors of Victoria's Community Development Incorporated, VCD, formerly VBM Community Outreach Corporation. On behalf of the members of the Board of Directors of VCD and those whom we serve, I rejoice on this hallowed occasion of celebrating she who has helped birth VCD and she who is synonymous with the life and hope which BCD brings to many. Evangelist Ruth Pryor, Mother Pryor, today we celebrate you.
Mother Pryor, today is your day. And may the sun and the sun shine in you and on you from now through eternity, for you are a gift among gifts. And make no mistake about it, you are truly loved. of the goodness of God. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire and darkest nights. You are close like no other. I've known you as a father. Known you as a friend, and I have lived in the goodness of God. Where my worship is at. <laughs> oh.
Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you. For 80 years, your goodness has been Oh, yes, and I will sing of the goodness of God. Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. If it had not been for the Lord, I will sing of the goodness of God. Didn't have to keep you this long. Oh, I will sing of the goodness. Through many dangers, toil and snare, the won't ready come. I will sing of the goodness. Of the wild when you get through singing. Yeah. Mother Pryor, I will sing of the goodness of God. While I was driving, I thought about this. I will praise the goodness of God. Yes, I will. I will sing the goodness of God. And when you get done singing, I ministries, the different things that Mother Pryor is to all of us. I had to tell him to get something purple because I know purple is your favorite. All right. Today we are going to hear from her family. Are there any family members that are here from out of town? All the family members from Ohio, Texas, just stand up on your feet so the people can see you that you all are here to celebrate on today your loved one. Your sister, your aunt, your dear family friend from Georgia. Georgia's here. Georgia, Texas, Ohio. You all are here on today. So right now, we're going to call this jewel that birthed the jewel. The treasure in earth and vessel that birthed this treasure in earth and vessel. Will you celebrate with me? I'm going to call our four family members that are going to come. Mother Trice. 
her dear mother is here. Will you celebrate Mother twice as she comes? Her sibling, Sister Diane Marshall, the grandchild that is the representative, and missionary Linda Pryor. Will you all please come at this time? Come on, clap your hands for her family as they come to show love. God bless you, Mother. God bless everybody that are here. <laughs> I'm so glad to be here today. All right. The Lord's family put the priors together and the trices together. You got a church almost. Thank God, amen, for being here. I had said, I don't know where to start because she was born uh, different from the other children anyway. And I can remember her loving to sing. She loved to try to make up a song and start off singing. Never knew she would ever be saved. I wasn't saved. And the Lord saved me, but he saved her just before he saved me. And when he did, she received the baptism of the Holy Ghost on Saturday night. We couldn't set her down and speak in any other tongue. We had to take her out of the church. <laughs> and she's always been like that. You can't go, do nothing with her when she want to do something for the Lord. She loves the Lord. I just don't have the boldness that she got, but she got holy boldness. And she can, she, I call her Dr. Ruth because she's so much like a doctor. She know you sick, she gonna go and see about you. She knows you need something, she go and see about you. She don't let nothing hinder her when it comes to doing the things that she should do. I thank God for my daughter Ruth. I know Ruth has a big name in the Bible. I don't try to put her with Ruth in the Bible, but she has been Ruth for me. And I thank God for her. I'm not going to say a whole lot because I know her life story, but I know she's been saved, filled with the Holy Ghost, a blessed with a good husband, and she's just been a blessing to me and everybody at life used to know her. And I thank God for her. Pray for me. And I know that you and I have had some wonderful times together. I think the wonderful years that we had, even though you're much older than I am. I was a baby almost when you got married, so really. And then you went to Flint, and I didn't see you. I had to come on the summer times to babysit your little bad, your wonderful kids. But it worked out. It made me not want kids for a long time. Uh, so, Ruth, I would just like to say, just for a second, I'd like to just wish that you were just, you could just see things the way I see you. You're a wonderful creature. Your smile, the joy, and the laughter, the wisdom, and the strength. And the, I'm so proud of you. I'll never forget that you're not so, you're so selfless. And, and I love you, Ruth. And I pray God.
y'all doing? How y'all doing? I just want to say uh, to my auntie, she loves you, she's caring, she's supportive. Her love is unwavering. Um, all the time, she comes stay with us, she visit us. The letters that she leave me is phenomenal. I wake up and have a letter just laying there, and I pick it up and read it, and she be gone. And it just it makes my heart fill with joy because she's always thinking about me and keep me on the right path and always keeping me telling me to keep God first. And I appreciate her for everything she has done for me. The, uh, her life, how she lived, and how she uh, carries herself has always uh, just made me want to just proud of her, happy of her. And now my son got a, something he want to say. Aunt Ruth, I love it when you see my game and just support me. I love it when you play Old Navy. Together, you're super funny. And your laughter is contagious. Well, I am a surprise, too. I'm here. I would love to say many things, but time won't allow. She's been all of that. She's been a sister. She's been a supporter. She's been a giver. And I thank God that she didn't get back all the money that I owe her. But she thanked God that uh, Bishop is gone on, but uh, <clears throat> the count is still good. I want to say to her, God bless you. Love you. One thing about it, she would give, and sometimes Bishop would buy and give to Mother Pryor and that wouldn't be good enough. She would tell him, you've got to give more. And if I could sing a little song, it's, isn't she lovely, Lady Ruth? Thank you, and God bless each of you. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. It is so good to see each of you. We are so excited and happy to be here, Sister Pryor to honor you on your 80th birthday. I just don't believe it. You look so absolutely wonderful. I think we got a little bit out of order, so let's get back to that. Okay. Some people call her Ruth Carroll. Some call her Ruth. Some call her Sister Ruth. Some call her first lady, but I call her my friend. One writer said that friends are our chosen family. So today I am blessed to have her as my friend and my family. Logistically, we have always been in close proximity. Our families came from Tennessee about the same time, but they didn't know each other. Our families live on the same street in Jackson, Michigan. Our mothers were friends. We never went to school together, so church was our connector. We went to the same little Baptist church for a little while. There's an old song that Sister Pryor sings sometimes, not really that old, said, I went to a church one night. Yeah. Well, we went to a sanctified church one night. We got saved and filled with the Holy Ghost. Yeah. We met the Lord Jesus Christ, and we met Alfred and Marvin Fryer. <laughs> they were the smartest and the cutest boys in church. And when they saw us, it was all over for the rest of those girls. All right, all right. Sister Fryer was a size seven, and I was a size eight. Oh, we was cute, and she could sing, too. Oh, my God. Had that long, pretty hair, and she was singing. I mean, they didn't have no choice but to talk to us. <laughs> it was a wrap after that. Yeah. Well, we married those Priors boys. Yeah. Friends became family. We did our vacations together. We did holidays together. Yeah. We had our children together. Al and I spent most of our weekends up in Flint at their house on Albert Street 
then over on Cass Street, Ellen, I moved to Flint because of our friendship with Ruth and Marvin. She is a wonderful aunt to my children and a dear friend. One writer says, friends are like diamonds. Friends are like diamonds. They're bright, they're beautiful, they're valuable, and always in style. Happy birthday, sister. Good afternoon, family. Most people in this room can speak about Ruth Pryor as a singer, preacher, evangelist, first lady, and even teacher. But there's only four plus two that I get the privilege of speaking from a grandchild's perspective. Over the next minute or so, I will share some cherished memories that, I, that have shaped me into the adult that I am today. Being the first grandchild, I got to spend a lot of my formative time with my Nana and Pawpaw. Um, I realized that it's impossible to share memories of my Nana without mentioning Paw Paw. Getting ready on Sunday mornings, Nana would always tell me, get a little juice on your stomach and some crackers. I often find myself telling that to my husband and my two-year-old. <laughs> she made sure I had Sunday school and 11 a.m. service offering. During praise and worship, I'd better be standing because I over there and Nana was right there, or I'd get a fist, and I knew exactly what that meant. I'll never forget watching the way she loved my pawpaw, but I'll also never forget the way that my pawpaw loved her. I remember the way that my Nana would carefully steal my pawpaw if he had been greeting too long, and I especially remember getting to leave service a few minutes early during the holiday times when Nana was cooking. My pawpaw didn't have to lift a finger when he got home from church on Sundays. My Nana had his newspaper ready for him, made his plate, and brought it to him. In return, Nana had no worries. Pawpaw took care of everything, but most importantly, he took care of my Nana and kept a smile on her face. I try to model the same acts of love I saw from them. Many people don't know, but my Nana's a gifted actress. <laughs> my Nana shopped for her own gifts, and during our family gift exchange at Christmas, she would act so surprised when opening her gifts. Let me tell you, I was fooled for many years. Until one year, I called my pawpaw discreetly asking, where's the gift? And Nana was mouthing, it's in the closet. <laughs> I often ask my husband if we're at that point in our marriage where I can buy my own gifts and act surprised. I tell him I promised to put on a good show. I had a great model. <laughs> my grandparents' wedding anniversary often fell during Holy Convocation. My pawpaw always made sure he had flowers for my Nana. This was probably one of his busiest weeks of the year, but he made sure Nana felt loved and knew that that was, day was just as important to him. As I've gotten older and married, I often reflect on these things and try to make sure I'm modeling the same behaviors. I'll end with this. There's something special in the prior grandchildness when you transition from gifts, dresses, and uh, suits to envelopes for Christmas. There's no greater feeling than getting your name called, receiving your envelope, taking a peek, and looking over to Nana and saying thank you. She always follows that with her infamous wink. Nana, I'm glad they were able to celebrate this milestone birthday with you, that you get to hear and feel how much you're loved by us. Being the second grandchild, I can say I had a more fun experience with Ruth. From going to the center court and walking the track with Nana, going in her closet and her telling me about all her hats, and from time to time burning kettle corn at Sunday night football, you can say we had some times. The most important memory I have, though, is our games. Every Saturday or Friday night, I would come downstairs and Nana would say, hey, Lauren, you want to play a game? even though we both knew this was about to be an all-night competition. We played Monopoly, Connect Four, Dominoes, Trouble, and my favorite, Uno and Old Maid. Uno happened to be my favorite, though, because it was one of the only games that I could beat Nana at. Like, it, every other game, it was just impossible. <laughs> then from time to time, I would get her an Old Maid, but she always had me. Even though these were just games, there were times I got to be with my Nana and relax. They were times we got to play our games and laugh and make jokes about who was doing the best or who was behind. I can hear Nana yelling now, Uno, 
even though she didn't have it. And sometimes I think she was hiding her cards, but that's another story. But most importantly, it was a time where me and Nana got to love on each other and create an unbreakable bond. My Nana has taught me so much, and I think the thing I hold on the most is to remember to have fun and to take that moment and to play a quick game. Good job. So uh, she just spoke on games. And so now I'm speaking on Nana's sayings, also called Nana's Dictionary. Okay, so, uh, so she sometimes... If she gets excited or something good happens to her, she doesn't say yay, she doesn't say yes, she says Yahoo Mountain Dew. <laughs> if she beats you in one of her games, either Domino's or Old Maid, she says hot diggity dog. Uh, sometimes when she can't think of the words to say and she is trying to tell you about something, she will say that gizzy, or if her phone is acting up, She'll just say, this gizzy don't want to work for me. <laughs> if you are special in Nana's life, she doesn't call you special. She calls her your honey dipper. Um, and so if she, you have food and, she, and you ask for like a piece, she'll say, do you want a little sliver? <laughs> Thank you, Nana. Happy birthday. Isn't that amazing? Come on, give her family a hand. I was sitting over there excited because I'm absolutely honored at this privilege to be able to be the moderator for your day. Yeah. But what's so amazing is that she can hear everything that's being said. That is so huge. We always wait until they're laid out that they can't hear. None of it. But today, you're getting to hear everything. So you can enjoy and laugh and, and be excited about the seeds that you have sown. Well, you know, I said, we have to put a green hat on because it's time for the love shower. Right. And the love shower says, we're going to give mother some green. We're going to give her some encouragement on today. Amen. I need y'all to get excited. My grandfather used to say, offer time is happy time. And we are excited tonight to present this wonderful love shower. Now, we had some opportunities for those to be able to have cards. We have this wonderful box for you to put your card in. And you know what? They didn't even make it a, a big to-do about saying what to give to how to give. But you know she's 80. Yeah. But then you know she's, she's worth more than 80. So what we don't want to do is minimize the gift and the grace that we have before us. Amen? Because she is an honorable woman of the Lord, we want to make sure that we send her wherever she wants to go, grinning. Are you all with me on that on tonight? So this is what we're going to do. I'm going to ask you to stand on your feet. I'm going to ask for the praise team that they will come and that they would render a wonderful selection and give us some praise music that for those of you who didn't have the opportunity to put your card in the box, you can have the time to walk around. We have some electronic ways to give. And Mother, we're so excited, too, that you used to be a teacher, right? <laughs> used to be a teacher. And on today, we have with us one of the former presidents of Saginaw Valley University. Yeah. He is here. Would you please bless the Lord for the former president, Dr. Eric Gilbertson. We celebrate you on today for being here with us and honoring our very own mother. All right, so we'll ask that you rest to your feet. Administrator, Mrs. Lachey, will you come and just give a blessing? My word is thank you so much for sharing the love yes. and your life. You've been such an inspiration to people all over the world. And because of you and Bishop Pryor, we're here today. And we're going to show up in numbers to show you some love. There's just so much to say. And like she said, you can hear it, you can see it, and we hope you can feel it. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this time, this infamous moment of celebration. We thank you because it's a joy to sow into good ground, good seeds for great harvest. 
We are the harvest of great work and prayer that has been given forth by this great woman of God. We ask that you would bless everyone to give something substantial that she may feel the love in her heart. We ask blessings in Jesus' name. All of who agreed said amen. God bless. You are in the hands of the ushers and the praise team at this time. Come on, if you don't mind praising with us. I know if Mother Pryor was singing, she would sing a little song that would go something like this. doesn't stop. Can you bless the Lord for Pastor Larry Trice as he comes and bless us on tonight? God bless. I don't know how much I'm going to bless you. But, uh, <laughs> I, I want to definitely, uh, I don't know how uh, our dates, uh, not on the same date, I have a, uh, a 
something for now and we're just going to sing songs for now. Come right up here and I'll bring our dad to the piano for you. Aunt Ruth could not miss this, this day for anything. I, as I was coming up, I was trying to emotionally get ready for this. You've become, you've become so many things to me over the years. Uh, what my mother's going through and you become a mother to so many of us. You give yourself, you give your life. And to some, it's amazing that I was thinking that eight is the number of new beginnings. God has given you ten of them. Even a cat only gets nine lives. You got two new beginnings. And um, I just, I can just think so many things and I'm not, I'm not going to build a bunch of stuff down. I was going to share and then ask me to sing and I said, we don't have the time for both of us. But I just honor and thank you and Ruth for supporting me. So, you know, the, this last transition I was going through and I called you up on the phone and it was so hard to call you. I felt like I was talking to my dad. And um, thank you. The only thing I can say is thank you. I'm alive today because you said, you could have said, no, boy, but thank you for loving me enough to stand with me. And that means a lot. That means a lot. I love you. Let me just let me just say this for all, everyone who's here. Grandma, I love you. Um, I hope I say Mother Wine is here. And, and my family here, I've not seen everyone in such a long time. But Aunt Ruth, I just, um, I didn't really prepare a song, but I thought about the words of this song right here. Um, Never too busy. Whenever I'm hurting, I take the time out to stop the pain. You're never too hurried whenever I'm hurting. That's the reason I'll make it known. And every time I run to you, and every time I come to you, and every time I call, you're right there. Yeah, yeah. And every time I reach for you, and any time I ever needed you, every time I call, you're right there. I love you. Thank you so much. How amazing it is that we get to hear everything. She gets to hear everything. I don't know about you, but we just dealt with something with a family member of mine. And, you know, when you have to call and make calls and just to let them know what's happening and what's going on, it can make you feel some kind of way. But my soul was so elated to know that your family and your church family say, you know what? Let's let her know today today, right now, that you are so loved, you are so thought of, because you know what, we don't know the different things that she thinks about, what's on her mind, 80 years, trying to think about, Lord, I, I used to be what her sister was saying, when they was a size 8 and a size 7, and when they was at church, and they was having a good time, and then when they had children, then to have their children, and have their grandchildren to be able to share and speak, and then to have a nephew to come and say, really say all that you mean to me, but you can really see and feel what you mean to him. It's those things that we can't take for granted. Saints, don't take it for granted. If you have loved ones that you've not called and you've not seen about, I'm going to just put it out there today. Make sure you give them a call. Make sure you say, hey, how you doing? I was thinking about you because you never know it goes a long way. With that being said, we have some more. And the some more that we have is some VBM family that are here on today. The women's department has a tribute. Sister Loretta Wood Simon is going to come and share. Pastor and Mrs. Roland Hendricks 
and then Dr. and Mrs. Fred Littles. Will you please come at this time to share on today? Tribute. Big Church Believers Ministries Women Report Partner. Greetings and thank you to all. We are here today to honor and celebrate our co-founder, Evangelist Ruth C. Price, 80th birthday. <laughs> Hebrews 6 and 10 says, For God is not unrighteous to forget or overlook your labor and love which you have shown for his name's sake in ministering to the needs of the saints and those that are consecrated before the Lord. And you are yet continue to do that on today. You are an anointed vessel of God. 65 years of preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. The two messages that resonates in the hearts of many individuals are built to last. And Naomi, Ruth needs you. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon you to bring good news to the humble and afflicted. Your words of encouragement inspires us that we are never too old to set goals and dream a new dream. After serving 26 years as Director of Women's, we are thankful that you have decided to pour into the next generation of leaders. We appreciate you, Mother Friday. We appreciate the prayers how you cover us in prayer. We appreciate your kind words. We appreciate you pouring back into this generation. So, I'm going to leave this with you. After all, you have been built to last. God bless you with many, many, many more birthdays. We love you. Amen. Good evening, everyone. We honor you, Mother Pryor. You are such a jewel to all of the women of the Victorious Believers Ministry. I want to say that you are not only a woman of character, a woman of grace, woman of excellence, elegance, and class. You have the anointing of God that rests on your life. You are a psalmist, a singer, a preacher in your own right. And we just honor you, and we thank you, and we want to celebrate you today for 80 years of all the, the sacrifices that you have given, all the things that you have bestowed upon all of the women of Victorious Believers, the women of victory. We are here because we have victory. We are victorious women of God. Is there any of all the Victorious Believers Ministries Women of Victory, if you want to stand, please stand so that we can give honor and praise to our mother, Mother Ruthie Pryor. And we, we want to wish you a happy birthday. And may God bless you with many, 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 many more because you are built to last and you still have a story to tell. Um, we had one of our sisters to, uh, read, to write a poem. I'm going to read that and we're going to let you go. Her name was Sister Sheila Babers. So you want to give her a hand. And the poem is the title of your name, Ruth. The letter R is that you're respected by many. When asked to give, you give plenty. You understand the letter U, understand God's desires. When she speaks, she inspires. The letter T teaches biblical and spiritual truth. She's known to encourage the youth. H is for holiness, lifestyle she knows to be right. When she preaches, sings, or prays God, she does it with all her might. Mother Evangelist Ruth C. Pryor, we love and appreciate you because you're always on fire. God bless you. We love you. I'm not much of a talker. Um, but when they asked me, I couldn't really help but say, sure, I would find something to say about Mother Pryor. 
Evangelist Ruth C. Fryer, a seasoned woman of legacy, elegance, and grace. I can't remember when I really actually first heard the name Ruth C. Fryer, but I know it's probably been over 45 years ago. I remember her from Holy Temple when they were on Buick Street. We never went to church together, but I always remembered her angelic voice in their choir. I remember her being a teacher, and I think did she teach fourth grade, and I remember saying if I lived in that neighborhood, I would have wanted her to be my son's teacher. And in 1976, I was a junior at Flint Northern High School when Bishop Pryor was appointed as our principal. So I felt like Sister Pryor was our first lady of Flint Northern High School. So when Bishop Pryor became pastor of Winsome World in 1984, and Sister Pryor was our first lady, I always felt I had one up on the members because I knew them from Flint, I knew them from Northern, I knew them at Holy Temple before they became a household name here in Saginaw. I always admired her from being Sister Pryor, Evangelist Pryor, First Lady Pryor, Mother Pryor, and any other title she had, because no matter what her title, she was always the same to me. Her genuine love and concern for people always showed through. One thing I always remember in 19, in 2014 when my mother, Mother Woods, passed, on our first Thanksgiving without her, I asked Mother Pryor, I said, could you please make us a pan of dressing? Because nobody could make dressing like my mom. And I don't think she know to this day what that meant to me. Because she just mixed it up. She didn't hesitate. All she said, just put it in the oven on whatever degree she told me. And believe me, even nine years later, I thank you. <laughs> so my words, when I think of Sister Ruth C. Pryor, R stands for radiant always sending out a light, shining and glowing brightly. You, unique, being one of a kind, no one like you, in a class by yourself. T, timeless, a classic, unchanged by time. H, humorous, having or showing a sense of human, humor, comedian. C, classy, elegant, stylish, sophisticated. P, prayer warrior, takes time in the battle through prayer, interceding for others and praying for God's will to be done in all things. R, resilient, able to withstand difficult situations with compassion, strength, courage, and positivity. Y, young, possessing youth, and energy of someone young. Oh, outstanding, distinguished, striking, exceptional, and are remarkable, worthy of being noticed as extraordinary. So happy 80th birthday, Mother Pryor, and may God bless you with many more. Thank you. Mother Fryer, we love you. I just came to say, you know, it's been over 20 years. When we first came to VBM, I had already lost my mother years ago. And you have been such a blessing. So this is very personal. I knew we were in the right place when my daughters came home and talked about this beautiful first lady. They said, she's funny, she's beautiful. Mom, she's so classy. I said, yes, she is. Um, but I want to thank you. I want to thank you for teaching us and being a great example. You taught us what it looks like for God to take a good man and make him a great man with a virtuous woman by his side. You taught us how to love. You taught us how to be women in our marriages and in our homes. You taught us how to raise our children. You taught us how to stand through adversity you thought, taught us how to move through our tears. And I just want to thank you today for your strength, for your loving kindness, for your laughter. I want to thank you for all that you poured into my husband. 
I want to thank you. And I just want you to know how I love you, I admire you, and I appreciate you. When I think of you, I think of three words. I think of trailblazer, pioneer. I think of visionary. And I think of a quote by Maya Angelou who says, as, even as I come as one, I stand as 10,000. And you represent so many. And so we love you very much. Happy 80th birthday. Well, I thank my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for everything. And I um, want to say that the word of the Lord is true, that love never fails. So your encouragement, your inspiration, your teaching has been priceless to me. And so as the young people will say, I understand that you would keep it 100. So when you encourage me, I could tell in your soul that you meant it. And it meant the world to me. And I want you to know that, that I pray for you for sure, no doubt about it. A mighty woman of God, and I just... I'm here to, to thank you, to thank you for everything. And I'll always remember that you taught me the way Jesus has taught me. You kept it simple. When you, when you taught us one day that fasting is so that you can check your spirit, check your flesh so that your spirit can prosper. You taught us that fasting is checking your flesh so that your spirit can pr prosper. And so I always need to check my flesh so that my spirit can prosper. And every time I do it, God shows himself great from your teaching. And I want to thank you for everything. Much love and respect. God bless you. God bless you today. It's a blessing to be here. My family is here with me. I'm going to ask my wife to stand and my daughter, Ashlyn, to stand. Amen. We thank you all today. Thank you all for inviting us to be a part of this great celebration. We honor you, Evangelist Ruth C. Fry. We love you so much. In April of 1994, the Dow Chemical Company transferred me here from Freeport, Texas to Midland, Michigan to work at corporate headquarters. I thought I was on a professional assignment, but I found out I was on a spiritual encounter. I attended a BVM service, April of 1994. I was here by myself. My wife was pregnant with our son, and she couldn't travel at the time, so I attended this service at 11 o'clock a.m. I was running late because I could not find Grant Street. So I followed this little lady in a Mustang. She had a big old hat. I said, she's going somewhere. I'm going to follow her. So I followed that lady, and that lady's name was Sister Mayfield. And she happened to be a member of Victoria's Believers Ministry, Church of God in Christ. I was on an assignment. I thank God for the assignment that he entailed for me. I'll never forget, I was, as I was walking from the parking lot to the church, I heard this choir singing in the parking lot. I said, boy, they are doing some shown up singing. They, they got it going on up in there. So I got into the church. I want to sit in the back of the church because just in case they tear it too long, I could get out. So I sat in the back of the church, and it was just awesome. Bishop Marvin C. Pryor brought the word, and what an awesome word, and that word I'll never forget, it was for me to be in Michigan at that time in my life. Then after meeting, after trying to leave church, and then two, two boys came 
chasing me down, asked me where I was going. Those two boys was Mel and Chris. They said, where are you going? You don't remember that, do you? I remember that. Where are you going? They said, they brought me back into the church, introduced me to Bishop Pryor and First Lady Ruth Pryor. I'll never forget it. Then the next Sunday I came, Evangelist Ruth C. Pryor brought the word. I heard some women preach the word, but I never heard it like that. And I say, I know I'm in the right place at the right time. It's been 29 years, and you still haven't changed. You're still the same, loving Ruth C. Pryor. i never forget in 2022, my father passed. A couple of months later, my father-in-law passed. And you called us, you encouraged us, and you felt like you was right there with us. i never forget in 2010, we built our new church. Bishop Pryor was supposed to preach the installation. He had passed on to be with the Lord. And I asked you to come. And you told me, I don't know if I can do this. I said, yes, you can. You came on and brought the word. And all of these men preachers were saying, who is that woman? Preach the way she preached. I said, that's my mother in Zion, y'all. And I just praise God for you today. I want to leave this scripture with you. Psalms 92. Begin with verse 12. The righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar of Lebanon. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall still bring forth fruit in old age. They shall be fat and flourishing to show that the Lord is upright. He is our rock. And there is no unrighteousness in him. That scripture is for you, Evangelist Ruth Pryor. On behalf of my wife's First Lady Jean, our daughter Ashlyn, our son Nicholas, who couldn't be here tonight, and our mothers, Mother Sadie Hendricks says she just want to let you know she's 16 years older than you, and she still loves you. And thank you for what you've done for our family. My mother-in-law, Murder Scott, we thank you today on behalf also of the nation of Greater Mount Zion Church where we'll never forget you. We'll never forget what you sowed into our lives, how you come and you minister and you give your all in all. Those people will never forget you. God bless you and thank you for what you do, not only for us, but for the body of Christ. God bless you today. Praise the Lord. We're so thankful to hear all those wonderful words. And again, just to be able to know that we call her in Southwest 3, our legacy mom. I think it's so amazing that I'm honored to serve as a supervisor at Bishop Samuel Duncan Jr. And mother is one of my advisors. And with her being one of our advisors, I just think it's just one of those amazing things that we are talking about legacy and preserving legacy. And one of the things that really um, is heavy on my heart is that we have so many amazing matriarchs and patriarchs and we are missing out. And we're missing out because in our times of living, it just seems like some of us feel like we know, we already know, but I do believe in my heart that it's part of my assignment to be that Mary with that Elizabeth. I believe I am that one where there's sometimes I am that Elizabeth and somebody else is that Mary. Uh, but in this dynamic of our legacy mom, when we started talking about legacy uh, this year, it was such a blessing to be able to have Mother Pryor and to give her her flowers and to acknowledge her to be that amazing woman of God. I don't know, did anybody hear her message when she talked about Naomi? Where are you? That Naomi and Ruth message that she declared is one that's along the lines where built to last. She's what she's that preacher, teacher, speaker, woman of God that we have in our hearts. And mother, we salute you, not just from the women's department here, but even Michigan Southwest 3. 
the pearls of Southwest 3. We honor you as our legacy mom, and we love and appreciate you for all that you do. We have some wonderful guests that were going to be here. Mrs. Faith Crosby, she was going to come and dance today, but she had a little situation room, but sending love to you. We also have a happy birthday greeting from none other than Elder Bernard Johnson, the one that plays the saxophone. He wanted to be able to communicate. I said, well, I can at least say he said happy birthday, mother. From afar, special guest and friends, video greetings from afar. We have the mother. This little hat, I, I, it went to London. It went to London to a, a fashion week. And I had to go pick that hat up because I said, this hat is like mother. It travels. We all know that mother, she travels here, and that she is a world traveler. And we have special guests and friends that have a video greeting for you. And then we have some of your precious, precious friends, none other than our adjutant mother, mother supervisor, Diane Bogan is going to share, and then we're going to have supervisor Beatrice Kendall that are going to come and give words to our mother. Can you clap your hands as we get ready to see all the greetings from afar? Hello, and it is my joy to celebrate with you as you continue to champion a woman of God, Mother Ruth Pryor, 80 years young. God has given you just a phenomenal life. He's blessed you. He's kept you. He sustained you. And I want you to know you look nowhere near 80. Girl, you look good. You look like you're about 45 and climbing. But that's okay. Mother, I want you to know that you have so many women across this world that look up to you, that respect you, that adore you, and that need you as an example as to how we can navigate through our assignments in life. You've stood and withstood the test of times, and for that we are extremely grateful. May the Lord continue to bless you is my prayer. Why? Because you too have the power to win. God bless you, mother, and may you continue to grow strong in the Lord. Hello, I just want to say happy birthday, Evangelist Pryor. We wanted to come your way and just celebrate with you. We are so grateful to have known you for so many years and you have graced us with your presence here at Evangelistic Center Church. And we just could not pass up this opportunity to send out a greeting and just let you know that we love you, Evangelist Ruth C. Pryor, and we are excited about this new decade that you have entered. Bishop. So we know that you've earned the title here in Kansas City and EC as Queen Mother. Yeah. So we celebrate Queen Mother today on this 80th birthday. 80 represents the start or duration of freedom from something. And uh, so let this just be the beginning of a new level of freedom for you. And we want you to be blessed this day. Uh, receive all the love and the gifts that they're going to give you. And we want you to live as long as you want yes. and not want as long as you live. Happy birthday to Happy you. Happy birthday. I would sing, but <laughs> maybe next time. <laughs> maybe next time. <laughs> Happy birthday, Mother Pryor. Wow. 80 years old. You have reached the exclusive club of octogenarians. What a blessing. The Bible said, with long life, I will satisfy thee. And that is, you are indicative of that scripture. I have so many memories of you um, in ministry and in life that um, time doesn't um, allow me. Uh, but I will just try to pick a few things. Uh, remember when I first came up to BBM and 1988, you were such a great supporter of, of me and the ministry. And one thing I liked about you, you always allowed me to become. Even though you were a music person, you didn't try to dictate to me what to do. And a lot of times people have a hard times 
uh, letting go, but you let go and allowed me. And I can say over the 21 years I was there, you never tried to dictate me. You never tried to influence me. If you had something to say, you would share it. And I adhere to those things that you share with me. A few things that were very poignant in our life. Um, I never will forget April 1996. Uh, it was a Saturday. Uh, my mother passed away. It was the Saturday preceding Easter. It was in the evening when my mom passed away. I knew because of the schedule that it was too late to get someone because anybody who was playing was playing at other churches. And uh, I remember coming into the church that morning for the eight o'clock service. We had two services at the time on Old Grant Street. Um, and you looked at me as if a zombie was walking in, like, how in the world can you be here? And your mother just passed away hours before. Uh, our relationship took a turn there because every since then, uh, you were a great encourager to me. But never a holiday or anything went by where you didn't invite me to the house to stand in the gap and that you and my mom were friends. So thank you for being uh, just that person. Um, so many uh, music ministries, another one that stands out. 1999, uh, the late Bishop Pryor, uh, we were invited to go up to Ohio for the late Bishop Willie James for his convocation. And uh, when we got up to sing, uh, I had a lot of songs. Uh, I didn't even ask you, I don't know if you remember this, but I started playing I'm Blessed because God said I'm blessed and you gave me the evil eye like as you would do and you very politely remove your hat and begin to torch that building. Um, we left that service to hear the word of your brother, uh, Larry, was um, had taken sick and we had uh, just to see how God had used you so mightily. Um, I can think of how you were such a caregiver for your late sister Sharon uh, until she passed away. Um, and so many other times. In 2008, I was with Bishop Pryor. We went to California. He was on the campaign trail for general board. Um, he was the guest of Bishop Charles E. Blake, who was the presiding bishop at that time. And uh, they asked Bishop Pryor to to speak. Um, I remember Julie McAllister singing a wonderful praise and worship song, just beautiful. As though the heavens had opened up and there was a genteel rain. And uh, Bishop Pryor got up and uh, he looked at you. Oh, want to give us a song. <laughs> And you got up there at West Angeles Church of God in Christ in Los Angeles, California, and sang, um, uh, oh Lord, you sang till the power of God came down. You, I remember you sang, I'm trying to think of the song you sang. Um, Let God arise <laughs> and his enemies be scattered. And, uh, I was up on the organ and the panoramic view um, just is it's sketched in my mind to look from the back of that church, the ushers, all the way up to the pulpit, Bishop Lake. Everybody was standing up. There was not a seat empty. Again, you gave me the evil eye, but I played and, and uh, you complied with the wishes of Bishop. Uh, just so many life lessons. I took my first flight with you uh, going to uh, uh, Azusa in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And you kept on the breath out of you on the right. I had all these books. Um, the late Andre Evans had gave me a book, um, Challenges of the Disciplined Life by Richard Foster. Uh, during that time, I had that book. I remember having that book and um, got on the plane and went straight to sleep. Uh, so, so much of my life is intertwined with your life. Um, I would have been there, um, but schedule wouldn't allow me. And if the committee would consider those of us out of town, 
uh, Fridays are better for us to get back to our place of worship on Sunday. Uh, the youth choir, we relaunch in the choirs and uh, we just have to be in place. I'm sure you understand that. I love you dearly. My, my, my prayer for you is that you could live as long as you want and you will never want as long as you live. Love you dearly. Mother's love is coming from everywhere on today. Would you please receive on tonight our adjutant mother supervisor, Diane Bogan of Great Lakes First Jurisdiction. We bless God for you. Well, good evening, everyone. Happy birthday to my dear, dear friend. I was this morning with Perfecting Church, uh, and uh, so Mother Wyman, you know, we had this thing we had to do color or whatever it is, and then um, I had to go to Detroit, so I drove from Detroit back up here to Saginaw because I just had to be with my friend. Uh, I was just thinking uh, while I was driving in the song that says, tell it over again, it's never been told. The half has never been told. And I say that because um, I love Mother Pryor. And uh, people wonder why uh, this woman is such a great person in my life. It's because we've been connected and knitted together and woven together as bishops, wives, friends. I can remember when Bishop Pryor, at that time, he was Superintendent Pryor. He called my husband. He was Superintendent Bogan. And he asked them some questions about the Bishop Freak. And so they talked about two hours. And so then the night that uh, we were together, the jurisdictions and the National Church, ironically, I sat right next to my dear friend, Mother Pryor, as they made the decision to confirm that Bishop Pryor would be the Bishop of Southwest Third Ecclesiastical Jurisdiction. I, I held her hand. She was like, oh, she called me Bogan. She said, Bogan. Well, I said, just calm down. It's gonna be okay. Just take a deep breath. It's just going to be all right. And then after the years went on, my husband passed away, and then the night that Bishop Pryor passed away, I got a call asking me to come to Saginaw. So I got in the car, my children drove me, and I, about 15 minutes after I got in the car, I got another phone call. They said, where are you? I said, I am on my way, I'm on the highway, I'm coming. And I hurried there, and as I got to the hospital, I went right in the room with Mother Pryor and the family. And uh, I shut the door and, I, and Bishop's body was yet there and I wanted to let her know. See, when you're friends and you love someone, you share things with them to help them. And I, I said, let's act like the first family. And I told her, I said, whatever you want, I said, you speak it because people had such great respect for this woman of God in the national church from the presiding bishop all the way down i told her, i said just say what you want to say tell them what you want and that's what she did and so you know that's what bathsheba did she made sure there wasn't any cross up when it was time for solomon to move in there was no cross up and so i told her, i said just say what the Lord has given you to say and what your late husband wanted you to say. And so we share so many things 
I'm here representing the Bishop's Wives, not just of Michigan, but all over the world. They love her. They, they adore Mother Pryor. We look to her at, at, for advice. We look up to her because she is such a role model. And so today we celebrate you, my dear friend, such a gracious, honorable, and a spirit-led woman of God. Um, I want to say that I, I brought love also from Mother Mary Jane Walton, the third assistant general supervisor. And then there is something from Mother Willie Mae Rivers. I mentioned to them that they were celebrating your 80th birthday. She's 96, but they did not want to be left out. So God bless you, we love you. The word of the Lord said, say ye to the righteous, it shall be well with thee, and ye shall eat the fruit of your doing. You're eating what you planted. May God bless you. God bless you, my dear, dear friend. I'm here today because you prayed for me. And I'm so glad because Jesus is so good to us. I thank him and I thank you for being just the greatest friend a person can have. For many, many years, we've been friends. Our children, our youngest children were born on the same day. And we went to uh, Bill Knapps and, and uh, <laughs> many times for them to get uh, all that they could eat of uh, biscuits. And we're so glad to be here on today. I would not let this time go without somebody seeing to me getting here. Ruth, you are special. You are special and you are loved. And you do so much. I looked up in the hospital, and who was there? Ruth Pryor. That's my sister. I love her, and we shared so many good times. Every Saturday, we would get up early in the morning, and we would hit from Detroit to Saginaw shopping. But our husband said we weren't shopping. We had to be just looking because we would never come back with a lot of bags. <laughs> But I thank God for her because we, share, we have shared so many, many, many things together. And I thought about the time that you were babysitting for Diane. That didn't stop us. We just took our baby along with us shopping too. And we said he's going to have to have a lunch because all he wanted to do was eat. So I thank God for you and your family and I want you to continue to pray for me. God is continuing to work great things in my life, and it's all because of you. Thank you. We bless God for Supervisor Bogie and also for Mother Tyndall. But Mother, it doesn't stop here. The International Department of Women Church of God in Christ Mother Barbara McCoo Lewis, General Supervisor. Greetings and happy 80th birthday celebration. Mother Ruth C. Pryor. God bless you as you celebrate 80 years of life. God has favored you to witness his goodness and faithfulness and grace for eight remarkable decades. You are blessed and to be celebrated and enjoy the fruit of your labor. My prayers are with you during this blessed season. I pray that you will be surrounded by family and friends who will love on you and are present to remind you of the impact that you have made on their lives as well as countless others. Mother Pryor, as the matriarch of the great Pryor legacy, your godly demeanor and prolific influence continues to leave an incredible imprint on the saints of Victorious Believers Church and Michigan Southwest Third Ecclesiastical Jurisdiction. Thank you for your faithful commitment to the ministry of prayer with the Titus II Teachers Prayer Line. Happy birthday, 
Your works praise you in the gates. I'm serving to bring glory to my father, Mother Barbara McCoon Lewis, general supervisor. She was not able to do a video, but she wanted to make sure that she shared her love with you. Well, this hat is the official day. We're officially almost over. But I want you all to know, don't leave, don't go away, because the celebration continues. It continues from here to the back. So don't leave. We're almost done. We have a few more special guests and friends. Evangelist Carlene Powell, missionary Deborah Martin, missionary Darlene Talbert, and supervisor Olivia Williams, who is the supervisor of North Central Jurisdiction. Will you all receive those ladies as they come? And immediately following supervisor Olivia Williams, we will have the presentation of our honoree by her very own blood son and daughter in love, administrative assistant and Mrs. Christopher V. Pryor. Will you all please come in that order? God bless you. God bless you. I am so honored to be able to be here, Mother Pryor, for your 80th birthday celebration. I was honored when I got a text to ask me if I would have words, and I immediately said yes. And you know, I uh, wrote, a, wrote a few things down that I wanted to say to Mother Pryor, but we go way, way back when Bishop, uh, he wasn't Bishop at that time, it was Elder Pryor, when they came to Flint, I want to say we almost like grew up together. Uh, her family and my family, she didn't have her family. That, yes, she did, had Derek at that time. And we were young couples, and we did a lot of things together. We uh, fellowshiped at Greater Holy Temple. Mother Pryor was, we, we were both in the choir, and Mother Pryor was our lead singer at that time in the choir. And we just had a wonderful time. Uh, we used to travel to the Holy Convocation in Memphis. Every year was about three or four couples. We would gather together at uh, Elder Cooper, May Cooper and them house. And at that time, we didn't fly. We drove our cars to Memphis, Tennessee. And we gathered every year and we went to Memphis. And it was just a wonderful time of celebration. And like I said, we were young. Our children were, grew up together. But I can remember this one year, uh, the year prior to that, there was quite a few of us ladies that attended Greater Holy Temple, and we wanted children, and for some reason we couldn't get pregnant. So we asked our pastor, Bishop, we asked him to pray that we would have some children. Well, he prayed, and about five or six, nine, nine of us women were all pregnant at the same time. And I remember my daughter, I tried to get her to come because I wanted her to come. Uh, I, was, I had uh, her in that year, 1972. She was born August the 1st. So I didn't even think about going to Memphis because, you know, of having a child. And Mother Pryor was pregnant with your pastor, Pastor uh, Chris Pryor. And uh, Erica, my youngest daughter, was born August the 1st. Mother Pryor came to me and she said, I'm going to keep her while you go to Memphis. I don't know, I'm not, I, mean, I, I can't go. She said, uh uh, no, I don't want you to miss. She said, I'm going to watch her, don't worry. Now, who? At who watches your child at she was three months and Mother Pryor was six months pregnant? Who watches your, who does that? Nobody but a friend. No, and I couldn't believe I got a chance. We went on to Memphis and Mother Pryor kept my um, youngest daughter, Erica. She was three months at that time. And my other daughter, um, Michelle, she was eight, I believe eight or nine. And that's just the kind of friend and the fellowship we had. And I can remember one other incident. We took our family, we got plane tickets, and we all flew to Los Angeles 
to the, uh, at that time, it was UNAP. And we had such a wonderful time. And so we just grew up together. We traveled. We did a whole lot of things. And it was just wonderful. But Sister Pryor, I wrote a few things down. You know, I looked up your name, Ruth. And it's a Hebrew word that means friendship or a compassionate friend. And it says, the true meaning of Ruth cannot be described with just a few words. For your name is destiny, heart's desire, and personality. And when people hear of the name Ruth, they perceive you as someone who is dignified, well-dressed, outstanding, self-sufficient, and impressive. So I was looking and I said, what else can I do with her name? So I want to tell you what your name means to me. The name Ruth Rock. R for righteousness, radiant, which is your personality. U for understanding and unbreakable because of your strong spirit. T, I thought about teacher because you are a teacher of the word of God. I thought about treasure because I treasure our friendship. H is for holy because you are a holy woman of God. Hope the, because of the encouragement that you give to others. Helper, honesty, hospitable, and honor. And honor is why we are here tonight, to honor you on your 80th birthday. I love you very much. Amen. What an appropriate occasion that we're all here to celebrate mom's 80th birthday. A woman of many hats, as she is known. And she has other hats that she wears, but she wears the dressy hat the best. And I like to say the Sunday go to meeting hat. She wears them well. But the hat that is most fitting or that I identify with tonight is the hat of the commanded blessing. In 1 Kings 17, Elijah the prophet, he declares a drought and says to Ahab that there would be no rain these years according, but according to my word. So to protect Elijah, God tells him to go and hide himself by the brook Cherith because he has commanded the ravens to feed them flesh and bread in the morning and flesh and bread in the evening. And so 35 years ago, my mother passed away. And on the day that we had her home going service, at the end of that service, Mother Pryor comes up to me and she says, I'll be your mother. The commanded blessing. God knew that I would need a mother because at 27 years old, Mary, at 27 years old, you don't know too much, and you're married, and God knew that I would need that relationship more than ever, but God had the commanded blessing, and mom would be there during those seasons that I needed her the most. When my mother left off, she picked up, but God knew the commanded blessing. He went ahead of my life, and he went ahead of your life, and everything that you had need of God has already gone ahead, and he has the commanded blessing in place and in position. So she gave me bread and flesh in the morning and bread and flesh in the evening. She nurtured me. Thank you, Mom, the commanded blessing. She encouraged my spirit, the commanded blessing. She prayed for me. 
and she taught me how to be a woman of prayer. I'm a woman of prayer today because the commanded blessing showed me how to pray. I'm a prayer warrior because of the example of the commanded blessing. God knows what you have need of because he knows where he's going to take you. But he had the commanded blessing there to nurture me, to, long, to grab alongside of me and to say, daughter, God has need of you. And I'm here for you. Sometimes you just would call and say, daughter, I love you. And God sees you. And you're going to be all right. She said, I didn't want nothing, but I just want you to know that I love you. And thou, God, seeth thee. The commanded blessing. Because of her example, she taught me about I'm a woman of the word because this woman told me that I was going to need the word. We need the word, saints of God. And the word is down on the inside of my heart because of this woman, the commanded blessing. Thank you, Mother Pryor. Thank you, Mom Pryor, for being the commanded blessing. You taught me how to have love for the word. And Bishop Pryor, what can we say about that? I can't talk about mother without talking about bishop. He was my father. I didn't have a father. My father passed when I was 11 months old. So dad prior stepped in and he called me daughter. Do you know what that feels like when your father calls you daughter? I didn't know what that felt like because I didn't have my father. But dad prior stepped in and he was principal at Northern High School at the time. And there were times when I was going through some situation and I needed a father. He said, daughter, you come on up here. Come on up to the school. And we went into the office and he would minister to my heart. Hallelujah. My father. I call him dad prior. Dad prior, I thank you for being the commanded blessing. Thank you, mom, for being the commanded blessing. You walked with me and you talked with me and you let me know that you were there and you loved on me and you said daughter it's going to be alright. I am going to be your mother. 35 years later she's still the commanded blessing. She's still my mother. Thank you for being the commanded blessing. Somebody may need to know out there that God has a commanded blessing for you. You're not by yourself. Whatever you're going through, God has a commanded blessing for you. Thank you, Jesus. In the words of Jude 22, it says of some having compassion, making a difference. Thank you, Mom, for making a difference. from Texas. I am so excited to be here, Mother Pryor. You could not have had a baby of celebration and I am not just here. I can never forget what you have been in my life. Candace stands with me. Sister Deborah just talked about mom and father. Just to give a short synopsis of our relationship. I came to Grant Street in 1983 when Pastor Pryor had begun ministry. And as they began the ministry, I came as a broken vessel with two children to raise on my own. And both of them surrounded me with love and they shared what God had given them poured into my life and into my children. There would be days that I was on the road working and Mother Pryor would pick up the children and take them to her house. Say, don't worry, darling, I got them. And I would get there and I would say, where are they? In the basement eating frosted flakes. I said, you didn't cook? She said, I was waiting for Marvin to make those hamburgers. Any of you all know Pastor Pryor, he did not cook, but he made some amazing hamburgers. 
I tell you, you would wait all day for those hamburgers. They were worth the wait. And I thank God for the both of them in my life. But as I thought about Mother Pryor, and I'm not going to be long. Candace is here. She has one word, and she takes over because, you know, she said, Mom, this is all you can say. I left my notes in my book. I was rushing to get on the plane to come to Detroit. And I had written some things down as I recalled my relationship with you. And there were several Fs that kept coming to my spirit, and I wrote them down. And I said to Candace, when we got on the airplane, I can't believe I left my notes. But the Lord gave me back those Fs, Chris. One of the Fs, when I remember Mother Pryor, the first thing I remember is faithful. Faithful. Anyone that knows Mother Pryor, you know that she's faithful. She's faithful first to Father. She's faithful to her family. She's faithful to the ministry. She was a faithful confidant, faithful first lady, faithful prayer warrior, and faithful to the assignment in the kingdom of God. Your poor Mother Pryor has saved, helped, and healed many broken hearts and spirits to those who had no hope. As I was many days, you would tell me, you can make it. When I would say, I'm giving up, I'm not doing this anymore, you said, oh, yes, you can. And she'd say to us, come on, Candace, let's run to the mall. And when she said, let's run to the mall, she would run to the mall. And Bishop and I, when we would take our trips around the track in exercising, she and Candace would be running, and Bishop and I would be sauntering because we could not keep up. But she always was faithful in the things of God and sharing with us. I appreciate and love you so much because to those who had no hope, you extended hope. When I didn't want to live, you said, oh, yes, you're going to live. I'm not, not only will you live, we're going to help you live and make it through. Always being my constant reminder that we are built to last, no matter what the circumstance or adversity. Mother Pryor never allowed us to be mediocre. She said, mediocre is not on my radar it's not a word that we use. It was always excellence in ministry, excellence in a woman, excellence in the call that God has on your life. This is one of the women that I know that is phenomenal and walks in excellence through knowing Abba and his purpose for our lives. To just give you a note out of her book, she says, I declare I am an extraordinary and I am not average. I have been custom made. I am one of a kind. I am God's masterpiece, his prized possession. I am a child in his image. She is a resilient woman. She has lasted through the time, the test of time. And there was one scripture that I had, Colossians 3 and 12 through 14 says, since God chose to be the, you to be the holy people he loves, you must clothe yourself with tenderheartedness, mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, making allowance for each other's faults. Forgiving anyone who, re, who offends you, and the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. Above all, clothe yourself with love, which bind us together in perfect harmony. That is who Ruth Pryor, Mother Ruth Pryor, is to us. The word of God speaks her life, and I celebrate you this afternoon, and thank you for being all that I needed when I needed. I have
have about 37 seconds. She took most of my time. So I'm just going to read this scripture. Proverbs 31, 25, and 26. She is clothed with strength and dignity. And she laughs without fear of the future. When she speaks, her words are wise. She gives instructions with kindness. Not only does she do that, but she taught me how to wear earrings when I do laundry. She taught me how to wear earrings when I do my yard work. And when we would go to Meyer together, we would run down up and down every aisle because she didn't know what she may have missed, even though she had her list. But the one thing that I appreciate, Mother Pryor, about you the most is not only your touch, but your sound. The woman with the issue of blood, she said, if I could touch, I would be made whole. She touches with her words. She touches with her wisdom. She touches with her smile. And she touches with her grace. All to make those that encounter her whole. And Supervisor Taylor, you took part of what I wanted to say when you talked about Mary and Elizabeth, when Mary greeted Elizabeth, the sound of the greeting made the baby leap in her belly and it was filled with the Holy Ghost. And Mother Pryor, the sound of your voice healed. The sound of your voice ministers. The sound of your voice makes people whole. Because there is a distinct sound in your voice. We honor you today for your sound. For your touch. For your wisdom. For your grace. And for making me whole. Listen intently for all of your experiences with Mother, different activities, and I don't have all of that. I'm single, no children. I don't know if I've ever eaten with cooking. But all the wonderful things you have experience with mother treasure them because she is a seasoned woman of legacy and you have heard a portion of your legacy this evening mother prior you have been an inspiration in so many lives across this world not just here in Saginaw you go beyond Michigan and we love you. She's a prayer warrior. And if you have never heard her on Titus 2 prayer call line, you are missing a treat. All the women on that call pray. But you know how you have that last one? They can bring it home. This woman of God, when she prays, and you said it right, young lady, her voice, her voice does something to you. So I'm glad that I was asked. You are a friend to me, a friend of mine. And we don't see each other every day, even though we live here in Saginaw. We don't see I think we at least see each other once a year, at least once a year. But she's close to my heart. My mother loved her, my father loved her, and I 
without her. Now, this is what we do have in common, and that's humor. I love to laugh and have fun. I took that out from my dad. But Mother Pryor has a sense of humor. I ran into her at Anderson Eye Clinic one day. Sure. You know, and I'm thinking, you know, I threw something on, ladies. This woman was sharp. I said, what's the eye doctor plan? <laughs> and she was sitting there, and we talked. And when I walked up to she said, what are you doing here? I said, I once was blind, <laughs> but now I see. I no longer see men as trees. <laughs> oh, okay, she balled up a fist at me. But we have humor in common, and I love that about her. Mother Fry, I love you so much. I love you. I pray for you. You're always on my heart. The Lord put first ladies on my heart and in my spirit because I know it's not always easy. But you have done a phenomenal job. And your grace and your position, such soothing grace, wonderful grace. And I had written out something, and I always do and never read it. But when I look at you, your eyes show love. Beautiful. Your lips speak words of kindness. Your hands bring healing and peace to the soul. And your walk, you wear the garments of praise. You have been an example ever since I've known you, and that was on Mildred Street in Flint. That's been a while, on Mildred Street and then Holy Temple. I love you, Mother Pryor. I'll always love you, and you are so deserving of this evening to celebrate a life of legacy. Eight decades, 80 represents abundance, prosperity, and looking forward to future goals, and I just know the Lord is going to bless you with the desires of your heart because you have been faithful to him, you have been faithful to the ministry, you have been faithful to individuals, and this is just a small snapshot of those who would have been here, could have been here had they known, I'm sure. So we love you, Mother Ruth Carroll. Pryor. I call you Mother Pryor. You know, old school, you had to put a handle on it. I would have got a beaten show enough if I had just said Ruth. But we love you, Mother Ruth Pryor. May you have happy, happy, happy days and many more celebrations, not just of birthdays, but celebrations because you deserve to be celebrated. so thankful you can't see everything and everybody but you know mother she doesn't like leaving anybody out lady mother molly whitehead the president of the michigan ontario bishop's wives is here on today we bless god for you being here also mother reese and mother Hum, you all are here on today we bless god for you and our very own your dear friend could not be here today but she got a book and she wanted to make sure where is she here Mother Ella Gordon is here. Come on, stand up on your feet and wave your hand. She's a Titus II lady also, and I was so encouraged with this dear book because how many, can we all clap our hands and encourage Mother to get her book out? Can we encourage Mother to get her book out? Come on, that's it, Mother, we want your book. It's in the process. She said it's in the process. We're excited. And the five-fold ministry that are here, anyone from the five-fold ministry, if you're here, could you please stand? We honor God and honor you, and we know that Mother does too. I know Bishop Johnson is here. He's gone. You have Apostle Glenn, Bishop Dean, um, Pastor, Apostle Brown. Yes, they're here, and they have come to celebrate you. So with all that being said, and if we forgot you and didn't read, just get call you, would you please forgive us if I promise, I promise it was not intentional. But we want to love on you, and if I could so that this can be the last time I come to the mic, we're going to have the presentation of the honorees, 
the honoree is going to speak to us and then we're going to exit. But when we exit, before the exit, we're going to have the benediction and the blessing. But will you all please allow our honoree to go out with her guests. Don't break rank. And we're all going to go in the back to celebrate together. Is that all right? Is that all right? Amen. Please, will you please celebrate with me the pastor of Victorious Believers, Church of God in Christ, Administrative Assistant, Christopher V. Pryor, and our very own elect lady, Lady K. God bless you. This has been such a special day, and I want to thank each and every one of you. So many people have come near and far to celebrate our dear mother. And I just want to say thank you all so very much. We absolutely had to do this because, as everyone has said, I echo and ditto the sentiments. But, you know, we all have a special part that we play in her life. And, indeed, I do as well because I had the honor of marrying her baby boy. And so, you know, with marrying the baby, a baby marrying a baby, I had to make sure that I got it right to take care of my man. So I got the dressing down, I got the fried corn out. Actually, I was pouring some bacon dripping in the cup today because I knew that Thanksgiving is on the way and I got to get that corn right. But as everyone has said, you know, I have known her since I was about 14 years old because we've been together since I was in the eighth, ninth grade of high school. And they invited me into the house. They loved on me, and I echoed the sentiments of being called um, daughter. And I'm just so thankful that every milestone in my life, mom was there. And so I am just so thankful, you know, just for our relationship, the bond that we have, you know, that we can you know, have fun, we can be serious, but she has been such a role model, an example, a trailblazer, everything that everybody said. But I just feel special because I'm the daughter in love. And so I know you all have special places, but I think I rank at the top. And Lady Ella, you laid my mouth as you always do. Doesn't she look absolutely beautiful? And I'm looking forward to reading your book. I have it right on my table. And so, I just want to say thank you again, um, just the example that she's been. She's been there for graduations. She's been there for weddings, just, just helping me as a wife, raising the children, being there when my mom passed, you know, always asking to this day, what do you need, Lady Katie? Lady Kay, how can I help? Can I be there? Just always there. And I just pray that when I turn 80, I can step as she steps. I can walk as she walks. She beats me doing things because of the strength and the anointing that God has on our life has been so rich and powerful. And I'm just thankful that I get to stand beside her and just continue to watch her and just be a breeze in her trail because she is indeed a trailblazer and I love her so very dearly. So again, thank you all so very much. And to the committee, when we said that we wanted to do this, you know, Sister Gwen, she immediately said, I'll do it. I'll spearhead it. She got a team together, and you all have done a remarkable job. Uh, the committee, thank you all so very much. You all see all the names on the back of your program. Phenomenal job. I know it's a lot of work, labor, and love, but I just know that you know, hopefully, you know, she appreciates everything that we have done. And please don't leave. We have prepared some niceties for you so you don't have to go home hungry and just to continue to celebrate and take some beautiful pictures because life is all about making memories. And we get to do that so very often and there's not very many places we go without mom being right there. We love that we travel together all the time. It was especially great when the babies were young because they would love to go in Nana and Papa's cabin on the cruise. And we'd be like, oh yeah, y'all want to go to Nana and Papa's room? Absolutely. <laughs> so we can have our time. So we, I just thank God that she has just been just a phenomenal, phenomenal woman, as everyone has said. And so I will decrease so my wonderful husband can continue to share on mom. 
Listen, I want to say thank you to each and every one of you who have come on today. This is so special. My heart's desire was to celebrate my mom while I'm living and all of you who have made it, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. All the pastors, again, I need you to stand. Pastors and first ladies, come on, I need you to stand again. I want you to know how appreciative I am. Bishop, I see you. Our special guest for tomorrow, Pastor Heron, his wife is here. My uncle, this Pat, all of these who are here, come on, help me celebrate these leaders. Come on, remain standing. I thank God for you. Our leader, Bishop Samuel Duncan, had to go out of town, out of state. But uh, Bishop Dean and Southwest 3, A.A. Lachey is here. I want to say, Pastor Hendricks, you surprised us to be here on today. My heart is full of joy. And so we want to say thank you to all of mom's dearest friends. Uh, when Lady Compton said Mother Winans was coming, I just started smiling really good. And I knew mom was going to cry. I saw my friend, the Reese's, and then he told me his mother, Mother Reese, was coming along with Mother Hullum. I said, shut your mouth. I am overjoyed that you're here. Come on, saints. Help me celebrate these leaders to all of them. To the greatest mother in all the land. Come on. I'm so grateful. Come on. Doesn't she look wonderful? Yeah. Isn't she lovely? Yeah. Come on. Come on. Isn't she lovely? Come on. Isn't she lovely? Come on. You can do better than that. Help me celebrate. Come on. Help me celebrate this queen. A woman of class, a woman of excellence, a woman of resilience, a woman who just loves people. And so wherever I go, I went to Memphis and everybody was saying, Mother Brian, Mother Brian, they were stopping her and I was like, wow. And so not only that, in the city of Saginaw, she is well loved. My mother, if you can just be seated, I've got to take a couple minutes, I would dare not rush this. Yes, there's food in the back and I want you to go into the, uh, the Family Life Center. But I thank God for a woman of class. All my life, that's all I've known her to be, is a woman of class. We would travel as a young age. Back in the day, you used to have to wear a suit or something when we'd go on the airplane. We, and we always had to dress up. And so that's just how she's always been, her and my father. And I thank God for the seven, 47 years of marriage that they had. Just great people, loving God. My mother is a giver. She is a giver, and so, so many of us have been recipients of that, of how she gives, how she pours out financially, how she gives wisdom and education to so many. And I'm so blessed to yet having her alive, full of energy. As my wife said, we're traveling everywhere, not only cruises, she travels. I think next year we're gonna go back to Africa again, all right, and we'll go back to Africa again. And she's on the move, she's on the move. You should see her, they, they, they have sponsored. My mother is such a giver that we have an orphanage and they built a facility uh, out of the kindness of our heart and a dormitory for those children. When those children needed a bus, my mother sold into the ministry. And so they named the orphanage, they named the building complex after her and my late great father. And so she's just such a giver that is always pouring out. If someone has lost a loved one, she always has a book that deals with grief and to tell them how they can make it. She's inspiring bishop wives and pastor wives to make sure things are in order, that your name is on the insurance papers. Come on, can I get an amen in the house? She's just that type of woman, always making sure that things are in order, taking care of business, although she worked and traveled. She made sure that she was home. She followed me in all the sporting events that I was in. And when I played quarterback back in the day, if you would watch the film, there was one film where, where I was running. And my mom was running down the field with me saying, don't you hit my boy. That's a mama right there. Come on now. You better talk to me. My mother, you see her as an elegant woman, but she, she, she was an athlete as well. She played tennis with us. She shot basketball hoops with us when I was young. So she's very athletic. Many would call her back in the day a Tom boy. And so I'm so grateful because she loves on our sons. and She loves Carrington. is playing collegiate football. And this week they told him, you need to travel with us. And so he is out of state with the football team. And I was so hurt. I was so mad. I wanted to call the coach, but I couldn't do it uh, because it's the college level. Back in the day, if it was high school, I would have told him, no, if he, if, he, if he ain't playing, I need to make sure he is here for the 80th. 
But he went over to the house and spent an hour or so with mom before they left. And so I'm just so grateful, so grateful of how she speaks into our lives. She's here on Tuesdays and Thursdays interceding as we go to the streets to minister. She's out there ministering to the people. uh, And she's just a blessing all around. She's one of the top givers of our ministry. She's always encouraging me, uh, pushing me on and telling me to rest when I need to rest. She does so much. And so for you all to have this theme of wearing the hat, she wears so many hats so elegantly. And so I'm so proud to be Chris Fryer, the son of Ruth. C. Pryor, Mother Pryor, and all those other titles that she has. She's just a beautiful person, not only on the outside, but on the inside, she is beautiful. And so to be able to have the honor to celebrate her back in the earlier part of this year, I said she's turning 80. I need to make sure we throw a great Holy Ghost party because a Holy Ghost party just don't stop. Amen. And so with that on today, I am elated to be able to just share my mother with so many people. As uh, Sister Martin has flown back from Charlotte, North Carolina, so many people love her and her life is shared with people. She talks to them. She encourages them. She stays up late on the phone. She does so much. And so I'm appreciative. She's like my grandmother who is 99 years of age. Maybe you didn't know that today. Yes, my grandmother who spoke 99 years. She drives two hours back and forth on a regular basis to go check on mom, to make sure grandmother that things are well. She's at my son's football game. She's at my son's tennis matches. She's supporting in every area. And so I could not allow this time to go without acknowledging. I thank God for my big brother, Derek Dwayne Pryor. Come on, D, stand up, man. I thank God for my brother, Derek, and how he is there. And we we just thank God. She is a woman. I've learned resilience based upon her life that she is yet living because it's not over yet. Praise be to God. And so I've learned so much because of her passion, her joy of having fun. Every Sunday we go out to eat eating together as a family because that's what was instilled in me as a young man that we would sit together and have food together and eat as a family and so my heart is full of joy to be able to celebrate this loving person who loves all people you would think that you've known her for years you could be in the grocery store she's talking and just loving on people and so tonight the gifts that you have given today I want to say thank you so much she's going to pour into the lives of so many people she's going to be a blessing to so many but I want you to make sure you keep this for you and so on behalf of the board of directors the BBM board of directors I'm going to ask them to come as well as our other board the victorious Christian uh, community development board that takes care of the other responsibilities uh, that we're doing and so uh, join us on tomorrow. Why, why don't you come up here? Why don't you, why don't you come up on the stage? Uh, we want to just show into your life and, and be a blessing to you and just uh, let you know how much we love you, how much we care for you. You're a woman of elegance. You're a woman of grace. You're a woman of passion. You, I mean, you just wear so many titles. And so tonight, we just want you to know uh, we're showing into your life as a church and a ministry, and we want to be a blessing to you. And we want you to, we want you to go... Let's, let's, let's turn to her. Let's turn to her. Let's turn to her. Let's turn to her. We're, we're playing a game of scramble. We're playing a game of scramble. We're playing a game of scramble. Can, can you, you can't put the other screen. Can you get the other one? Okay. Maybe not. Okay. I don't know. I don't know. All right. Uh, oh, she already guessed it. We're sending mom on a full flight. Pray for peace in the Middle East. Mama, this is for you to go to Dubai because you have been wearing us. Wanting to go to Dubai. And so we want to give you all trip, all expense paid for this board of directors, this team from the Victorious Christian Development Team. We're pouring into you to go to Dubai. You can face that way. You can turn. She got it real fast. And so you're going to have a wonderful, wonderful time. And I'll probably be forced to go with you. But don't worry about it. I'll take the force. Hey, man. Yeah, it's going to be a wonderful time. And so a all expense paid for. Everything will be covered in regards to meal, your transportation, as well as every excursion that you want to be involved with. We want to make sure that you get this opportunity. So thank God for your heart. I want to thank the BBM Board of Directors. Brother Kwame is over an accounting firm here in Saginaw. He's our chief board. And I just said, I want to make sure we just have fun and celebrate mom. There was another special artist who was unable to make it. We thought she was coming, but things changed. But you all are so special. 
for being with us on today. And so, Mom, we want to just honor you and just say we love you. I need you to pray for peace in the Middle East. Amen. I know the Bible's coming to fruition. I got one more continent I've got to get to. And so with that being the case, pray for the peace of Israel. Amen. We're praying for people. The Bible tells us in Psalms 122. So today, I want us to stand as we sing happy birthday to my mother, Evangelist Ruth C. Fryer. Come on, I need you. I wish Sister Ingrid was up here because she's, she's just got that melodious voice. But I want you. Come on, Sister Ingrid. Come on, help me, and we'll sing this today as we're celebrating to all my family who's come from different areas. She's going to do that on today. Come on, Sister Ingrid, if you will, with the blue mic, help me out and just just give it to us the pretty way of how you would sing it. All righty? Here goes. Tess, I love you, Mother Pryor. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. All right, come on, put your hands together as we celebrate our honoree of the evening, of the day, of the month. We celebrate you. Come on, make some great noise for my mother, a woman of passion and zeal, a woman of character and of voice. Come on, clap those hands, all you people, and help me celebrate evangelist Ruth C. Pryor as she gives her last, her greetings to us on today. Come on, make some noise, make some noise. Happy birthday, happy birthday. Happy birthday, happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. To God. say I'm speechless. I, I, I mean, I just can't believe this. It almost seems surreal. I do want to give honor and respect to the Lord, to my wonderful pastor and his adorable wife, and to each of you. How, how do you take, I don't even have words to express my gratitude for the love. And when I look out and see dear friends, loved ones, here today. Let me tell you how I found out about this, and I'm going to move it because I know you need to uh, exit. We've been here for a while. My son asked me the first of the year, Mom, this year you're going to turn 80, and you, what, we, uh, what do you want us to do? I said, I don't want you to do anything but send me to the back. <laughs> and, uh, I, you know, I'm just thinking, and he said, well, you, you know, I never heard any more about it, but every now and then I'd go over there. I said, boy. My friend Ella Gordon went to Dubai, and she had all those beautiful pictures that she brought back. I said, I would just love to go to Dubai. So my sister and I planned, we heard about a lady was going, we planned the trip, we were going to go to Dubai. And Pastor said, no, that's not long enough, because it's going to take a good little while to get there. So you want a little more time to spend there. So I said, oh, Diane and I, so he talked me out of it. I said, okay, we want to go. My precious mother was 98. I didn't want to go and leave her. But uh, I said, okay, I gave up on Dubai. And I said, well, Chris, please, whatever you do. He said, we want to do something. I said, please don't. So I was standing inside Macy's one day, and I was paying for something at the counter. And I looked down at my phone, and you know how your phone will come on, you know, just light up? And there was this flyer that said save the date and I said oh my god and the, and the lady at the, the cashier said madam are you alright and I, I said yeah yeah I'm alright 
soon as I got home, I didn't call Pastor Chris. I called Sherry. I said, Sherry, I thought you were my friend. I said, how dare you all plan something like that and you didn't tell me. She said, well, your sister Diane, she knew about it. And I said, I, I called Atlanta. I said, Diane, she said, don't fuss at me, your son. She said, it was your son who said, don't say anything. So most of this time, I had no idea what was going on. I, and, and I was so overwhelmed when a couple people called and said, see you later. I'm thinking, I know they're not coming. This is just, this is just too much. But the Lord, I, I had some chamomile tea last night, and I had some melatonin so I could sleep. Because I, I didn't know what they had planned, honestly. I really didn't know what they had planned. And then I get this call from my girlfriend that says, prior, I'm coming over. I said, coming over what? She said, I need to do some measurements. I said, some measurements? And she said, yes, never said anything else. I said, okay. She came over, got the measurements, and then she calls me up one day and said, are you free next week to come down? And I said, I think I am. And she said, well, I want you to. And she hooked me up. I was just thinking we was going back, back and eat some cheese and crackers, and I'd be happy just to be alive. But to have all of this and to see all of you, I mean, I am just so overwhelmed. And I wrote down a lot of stuff, but I knew I wouldn't have time to, to uh, say it all. But, you know, when you get this wonderful age, you know, everything comes to you now. To see Mother Williams all the way from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, I am blown out of the water. Uh, and then I walk out there to come in, and here comes Mother Dolores Winans from, oh, I'm going, come on. I could not believe it. And then to see all the Mosleys from Chicago, Illinois, the whole family. Oh, my God, I had no idea. And I said, I wasn't going to cry. My sister told me to get a towel because, you know, you cry easily. And so somebody took it when I walked in. I just been using Kleenex and everything. And, and I, I just, I can't believe it. My brother-in-laws are here from Jackson, Michigan, and, and my sister in love, and then a, a Pastor Corey and his wife and my cousin and then my niece, Alvin, and oh, my God, if I start calling it's just, I never had a clue. And these people, from all my cousins from Cleveland that I hear, oh, I, I just, just tell me to shut up. I, I just, I, I, I can't believe it. And then to see the Hendrix all the way from Texas, Houston, Texas, I had no idea. Darlene, you didn't even call me and say a word. Shame on you. And then my goddaughter from Charlotte, and then, Listen at this, I had a lady to call me and ask me to come and speak in Texas, and I didn't know her. And I thought, well, you know, you kind of want to know a little bit about her. And, I, and so she said, I saw a, a clip of you on YouTube, and I want you to come and speak. So she asked a bishop and a supervisor, could I come? And they brought me down there, and I'm going to tell you, this woman has been in my life. She has blessed my life so much. She took me out to her private quarters on the lake in Houston, Texas, and slept me for a whole week. I mean, I was had my own room, all the good stuff, took me to be. Linda, why didn't you tell me you were coming? <laughs> that was w see, way before the pandemic I met her. I had no, I, no clue that she was coming. This is this this is just this is wiping me out. I'm telling you, my niece, my nephew's niece, and Linda, you were so nice. Can you give me a copy of what you said? No. <laughs> I'm lost for words. I really am. And to see, Pastor, I pray for you so much. When you lost your sister, and for you to come today, and your lovely wife to be with you. Oh my goodness, that's the start. And then I'm on a, a, one of our meetings, our, our weekly life groups, and a kind of little 
said at the very end to all the people on Hills Got 35 Women, they were in that group from all over the country. And she says, uh, we're going to celebrate Mother Pryor's 80th birthday, and a doctor and I are coming to uh, Saginaw for a month's TV at the Monitor all night. And I, I was just hitting the Monitor and everything. So, oh, come on. They're coming back from Morgantown, West Virginia. Well, I am. I, I'm probably. Uh, no, I'm not. The Reese's, I love you so much. Thank you so much for coming. Everybody, the Hayes's, all of you, and my BBM family, there's so many of you who are here today. I knew if I start calling names, I would miss somebody, but this is just remarkable. My dear friend, B. Kendall, oh, we did some traveling. Like she said, we shop all day long, come back with a pickle, and our husband would talk about it. We covered it. Southern and Lower Michigan all day long, but our husband was watching football games. You know, they don't they play all day Saturday, so we, that was therapeutic for us to just get in the car and just ride all over Detroit and, and enjoy. It. But I appreciate you, Mother Diane Bogan. I'll never forget when my husband died. I had planned to go to the women's convention, but when he died, I knew I wasn't going to be able to go. I said, I can't be there. And this woman of God put me up in one of the most fabulous hotels in Los Angeles. And the young lady who travels with me, we had a room that was so large, we was afraid to be in the room. I'm telling you the truth. The window started over there in that room, and it went all, we could see all over L.A. It went all over and we were saying, is this a setup? You think they put us in the wrong room? Oh, my God. It was absolutely just, just beautiful. So many of you have loved on me. And you're talking about the things that I've sown into your life. Nothing like what you have done for me. You were so wonderful to my husband and I. And you helped us in ministry. We could have never done this without the prayers of the saints. My precious granddaughters and daughters in love. Gwen, I see you back there. And Dr. Will, I see you back there. My son-in-law, uh, grandson. And uh, Alvin, did I mention you and, and Kim? I love you. Stacy, I love you so much. You've been there so many times for me. I thank God for you. And I know you're ready to eat. And Patty came from Cleveland to be with me too. Oh, I love you. You should have told me when we were talking on Facebook. No. Vicki, oh, Vicki, I have met you. This is just, this is it. I mean, if anybody ever gave me a party like this, what are you supposed to do but pass out? So you just stand up there and just, you know, oh, this is absolutely wonderful. Pastor, I'm glad you didn't send me to Dubai right now. Uh, and I'm glad you had to park. And, and then you were kind enough to send me to Dubai. I love you so much. I thank you. I appreciate you. Didn't let you know I love you. All you ladies over at Tasha, all our team, the Victorious Believers Ministry, Olivia Williams, and then Bishop and Sister Dean had the nerve to come. No, I love them so much. They're such dear friends. And then Pastor Lachey and Lady Lachey, they, they, they always send me cards and gifts, and somebody sent me a pound cake like I needed it in the mail. But all my little nephews, they're at my house, and they've been eating on it. It was really for me, because they've been eating on it, so I needed somebody to help me. Lisa and, and I, you all are just, Javita, I, I don't have the words to express how much I appreciate you. Gene Hendricks calls me all the time and prays for me from Texas. It means the world to me. You will never know how people can bless you. You all have certainly blessed mine. I'm finally going to do this book. I've been threatened to do it. I thought I didn't need a book to get to heaven, but they act like you got to write a book to get to heaven. So, you know, I'm going to try to get this book written. I love you. The Herons, oh my, he's going to preach in the morning. Elder Jerry Heron, he was a member, he and his wife, of our church. He's going to be preaching tomorrow from Cincinnati, Ohio. It's going to be wonderful. Thank you. I know I missed somebody. But I love you, and I want you to go in the back because I know this team, Sister Hodgers and, and Gwen Bowman, it, it, it's committee.
board of directors, I appreciate you all are home. You, you, you can stay in place. As a You all stay in place because y'all know how to send people to Japan. I, no. I love you. I love you so much. Thank you so much for coming and sharing with me tonight. This has meant the world to me. I thought it, it's so much going on. I did not want them to do anything. I said, please don't. John Stokes, I see you back there. I love you. I love you. I love you so much for being there for me. Continue to pray my strength in the Lord. I was trying to get up out of the chair. And uh, it could have been just a little bit higher, but I thank the Lord for it. I'm going to say this, but and then I'm going to let you all go. Bishop Dale Bronner from Atlanta says he used to try to figure out why his parents said he was fixing to get up. And he said he didn't know why. They just didn't go on and get up. They talking about they fixing to get up. He said, why didn't they just get up? He said, but I had a few birthdays, and I realized that I got to scoot up on the edge of the chair. And I got to push down on the arm. He said, and then once I get up, I stand there for a few minutes. I don't take off. I got to stand. <laughs> Bishop Adam Green, oh, I just, I can't believe all the people have shown us. Sister Tisha and Bishop Missionary, I love you all so much. Thank you so much for coming. I, I, I used to tell the people that, uh, I love you so much. If I could, I'd shake your hand too. But forget that. Y'all been on too many feeds tonight. So thank you. I always making me wonderful cake. Thank you. Tell me. Mingo. Oh, Jamie. Huh? That's it? Oh, my God. It's just been wonderful. I hope I can sleep tonight. I'm going to need four cups of chamomile tea and whatever. Eric, you know I love you. I love my mom. I'm telling you, the most wonderful woman in all the world. God has blessed me. To have my mom, and uh, she loves the Lord. She's out raising leaves at 99. We're trying to get her to stop, but she, 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 she's a go-getter, and I praise God for her. Such a prayer warrior. She loves people. People are always at my mother's house when we pray, and I thank God for her. So I thank you for coming tonight. Pastor and Lady Kay, I thank you because if you can keep to do this, you certainly will. There's two of them. They take me everywhere. They got me climbing the beaches of Saginaw Valley. They're trying to see these boys with these football games. I was hoping he didn't know. Uh, but anyway, he's playing. I love him. Let me tell you this. There is a gentleman in the Narnia with these fascinators. And if you all look as good as that, no, if you would like to have a fascinator, please, please. His last name is I know his name. Cranford. R Ricky Cranford. He makes beautiful fascinators. If you would like to have one, get you one because you're going to need one. Somebody's going to throw you a party. There we are. And you're going to need a fascinator for him. I love you. I appreciate you. God bless you. Sister Ella Gordon. This is the dressingest woman I've ever, ever met. She loves people and she'll do whatever she can for you. Thank you, our first mayor, for being here. Mayor Wilbraham for being here. Oh, it's just wonderful to have you. Mother Molly Whitehead, I, I, I'm telling you, I, I just had no idea that you would come and be with me today. Thank you so very much. Uh, you're such a sweetheart. I love you all, and I think they want me to shut up because they're ready to go and eat. I want to bring it to a close. It's my first closing. And the next time, no. No, no. I love you all. Thank you. If you will join me in the back, I'll be able to see you better. And uh, we can have a little fellowship together. Please, please don't leave. And if you could stay over for tomorrow, we'd love to have you. I know some of you have to get back to your own churches and homes, so I would not dare take you away from there. Thank you, Carol. Thank you, my brother-in-laws, brothers-in-law, Tom and Junior. Lee, Lee Ethel is here from Michigan City, Indiana. And and my sister-in-law is 90, what are you, Leah? 93? 93 years young. Still driving. Police?
Please don't do it. Don't steal or drive. <laughs> oh, I love her. I love her. I love you. I love you. Thank you so. Thank you so. Now I'm telling you, she 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 still drive drives the church, and other people have the nerve to ride with her. No, but she drives the church. So, I love you. I appreciate you. Have a have a have a blessed time in the back, and let's just enjoy the Lord. Oh. Pray for me that I'll be able to sleep tonight. I tell you, this has just blown my mind. Had no idea it was going to be like this. God bless you. Love you. You you deserve it. You, my wife said we're taking her on the road, and uh, her comedic. We thank God for her, and so all of you, thank you so much. There is food in the back. All right. So I want you to go into the gymnasium. I thank God again for Sister Gwen Bowman. I thank God for Sister Sherry Hodges, who's been my mother's traveling partner for years. And so help me celebrate Sister Sherry Hodges as well. What a great person she is. She just has a servant heart. And then to our supervisor, who wore so many hats on today, Mother Alethea Taylor. God bless you. We're praying for Baba Bishop in the hospitals for so much and so we thank all of you listen i want you if you will uh, get your get your phone out get your phone out take a picture take a picture and say i'm celebrating at mother Pryor's 80th birthday step right there right up front let me get to right step up front if you will you yeah get your camera out i want you to get a picture right there and then you're going to get a chance to post their tables in the back right there for you to be able to eat good food and have a good time on today and so just post that if you will i'm celebrating 80 years of life amen come on if stevie was here he would say happy birthday to you mama yeah but no, no i like that song i like that song i like that song but but with that being the case we are overjoyed join us on tomorrow at 11 and 6 it's going to be a wonderful time as we pull together her birthday falls right during the same time of our vision day so God is allowing us to do some more work in our community. And so she has been one of the spearheaders that helping that. Our next facility that we will build or go into in the next few months will be named after my brother Mel Anthony Pryor Community Development Center. And so I thank God for my brother because he did so much for my mom as well. But over the next couple months, I need you to pray that God will release for us this new season for us. Not 2025. We paid the building off in 2018. But in the next couple months, I need you to pray and stand with us as we will open up or begin to develop this new community center that will be a blessing to many. So if you'll pray with us in that endeavor tomorrow, Pastor Heron will be with us and then Bishop William Murphy at 6 p.m. tomorrow night. All righty. So it's going to be a wonderful time. Pray with us. One more thing. But I could not pray tonight without mentioning my wonderful husband. He was such a great man of God. He truly loved God and he loved people. And uh, I miss him so much. It'll be 14 years in February. But I thank God he's in a better place. I thank God for him. I thank God for everything he and Mel and Vonda. My children have been so supportive of uh, my husband and I in ministry. Derek was always running the sound and repairing things for us, and Mel was talking right and wrong, no Peter's church has been ready for a while, it's a blessing to have your children work with you in ministry, and I thank God for them, I thank God for Vonda's transition a couple of years ago, that God blessed her too, and I get so many calls from people who tell me that Vonda would always call them and pray with them, so that encourages my heart to know that my children love the Lord as we do, so we pray for one another, all right? Whatever we do, we've got to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Pray for Israel. It's time for the saints to cry out for Israel now. Let's not get complacent because it's not going on on our soil. I love you. I love you. I love you so much. All right, she's going to go out, and I'm asking you. You don't have to stay long, but it is free food. Amen. I got you there. You'll stay. All righty. Good food. All righty. And so with that, I'm going to ask her to go out so that we can all go in and celebrate with her. She hasn't been to our Family Life Center. And so with that, we'll go forward. All right, if that is okay. All righty. So let us stand. Elder Wanis, 
at Awanda Junior Wing. All right, he's going to dismiss us. We're going to have Evangelist Pryor, and she'll walk back there. Continue to walk back there. All right, Elder Wanders, again, thank you so much. This meant the world to us that you were here. I know everyone has busy schedules. And for you to come and to travel, thank you so much. Let's give God some praise for this jewel once again. Praise the name of the Lord. Well, we're going to bless the food. Father, we ask God that you would bless this food on tonight. God, that you would sanctify it, make it nourishing to our body. God, we thank you for this love fast on today. We thank you for 80 years of life, oh God, how you have blessed her. God, we pray, God, that you continue to bless her, God, and give her long life, God, and good health, oh God. We decree and declare it to be so, even now, and a right mind, oh God, in the name of Jesus. And we just thank you and praise you. We thank you for those who came from far and near, God. We pray, God, that you would, oh God, cover them as they return to their houses, oh God, without the loss of one, God. We just thank and praise you, even now. We give you glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. You can proceed right to the back to our Family Life Center. Grab something. Family, you would go as well. Follow Mother Brian. for everybody coming. Pray that you have a safe return home.